Kathy, are you ready? Yes, I'm Excellent. ready. We have well above 100 and participants trickle in at the rate of maybe one per second still. So uh, I think we are ready to start. Um, welcome everyone to the EC Game Changers uh, seminar series, online seminar series. Uh, my name is Rudi von Steiger. I'm going to chair through that uh, talk today. And our speaker today is uh, Professor Rumi Nakamura. Rumi is a very old acquaintance at ISSIS. Her PhD is from Tokyo University in 1990. And since then, she has worked in Tokyo at Goddard Space Flight Center in Nagoya at Max Planck for Extraterrestrials in Munich. And since nine, uh, 2001, she is at the uh, Austrian Academy in Graz and also since 2010 at the University of Graz. Um, that's the basic career of Morumi, but I should also mention that Rumi is uh, very has always been very engaged at ISSI as a team leader, as a convener, and also as a science committee member. So Rumi, thanks very much for your engagement for ISSI, and uh, thanks very much for agreeing to give us a talk in the Game Changers seminar today on the magnetospheric multiscale mission how magnetic field lines around the Earth break and reconnect. We're looking forward to your talk. Thanks, Rumi, and please, your word. Thank you very much, Rudy. Um, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, and thank you for coming today for this online seminar. Um, as Rudy said, actually, I will talk about how magnetic field Earth read, break and connect, and which is a bit different from the title. Um, but I saw many seminars and I saw many nice talks in the other planet and you have traveled to the sun and to the asteroid. And so today we come back to the Earth and we talk about, I talk about a bit on the Earth's magnetic field. So my content of this talk is I just want to first talk about what is magnetic reconnection. And then I will give you some overview of the Magnetic Fake Multiscale Mission, MMS, and then give you highlights of MMS observation of magnetic reconnection and give you a summary. So I see, I think in the audience, there are several people uh, contributed to this quiz mission because this is really, really a big mission. Um, within this one hour or 45 minutes, unfortunately, I cannot tell you uh, much, uh, only I can scratch the surface. And sorry if I cannot uh, miss, uh, miss your great results, but I hope uh, you can talk during the discussion. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a bit my playground. So this is the uh, geospace, so to speak. And of course, um, we are talking something about plasma, which is actually this very important gas charged particles, uh, which is um, filled for the universe. It's a universal thing. And 90, 90% of this visible universe is actually this plasma. And the near Earth plasma is somewhere where you can go and get to study the plasma. So um, here you have, you see this nice color. This is the place uh, where we have spacecraft, where we are living, which is the Earth. And Earth has a magnetic field. And of course, the charged particles, the important is, the characteristic is that it is um, trapped in the magnetic field. So in the charged gas, you know the Lorentz force works. And uh, in a no normal situation, um, charged particle gyrates around the magnetic field. So basically, if you have the Earth's magnetic field, they are plasma from the plasma uh, from the Earth's source. It will be trapped in this place, which calls the magnetosphere. While you have the sun, um, you heard this nice CME, solar flare. All this uh, solar wind uh, comes from the sun with the magnetic field. And so we have two different regions. So here, roughly in the red uh, of the solar wind domain, 
but the solar wind is a uh, supersonic and so you have you will get a bow shock and you have uh, the region where you have the four shock so in the actual case the both plasma domain doesn't mingle because as i said uh, plasma is trapped in the magnetic field so you cannot mingle and so you have this region of magnetosphere and the solar wind uh, all together separated and if that's the case nothing will happen and so my title or the magnetic reconnection actually is the process which breaks this um, two different regions and mingle each other. So in a very, very simplified way, I wanted to show this magnetic reconnection concept, but you saw the importance is that with this process, you can explain the large scale plasma process in the entire magnetosphere or other uh, planetary magnetosphere, the large scale uh, region, what will happen. But let's go to these basics. Um, as I said, if you have magnetic fields, the plasma is trapped in the magnetic field. So we call it uh, frozen. So you see at the left here, so this is the uh, feed lines, so magnetic feed lines coming from the both side, which has the different direction. And if you come to close enough together, um, you will have so close that this magnetic field uh, and particle will no, no more moving together. That means particle get um, no more trapped, which we call it demagnetization. And here I saw I have a cartoon here, which we call it diffusion region, where ions as well as electrons cannot more anymore trapped in the magnetic field, and somehow it mingles. And once you mingle, what will happen is that you will change the topology and comes back again toward the situation that the fields and particle move together. And uh, due to the uh, force, uh, J cross B force, we call it, uh, will uh, make this plasma and field get together toward the very high, uh, high flow and together with the field. So basically what will happen is, is that because of the process, the important uh, consequence here is that somehow this in this very uh, small diffusion region, we call it, where the ions and electron are demagnetized, the magnetic energy is dissipated. And as a consequence, you will see that the plasma flow, so it's a plasma accelerated and also heated. And the, this other important thing is since this process involves this uh, magnetic field line topology change, what will happen is that uh, plasma from different regions are mixed. So if you remember my previous view graph, we have solar wind and magnetosphere. This process therefore gives you the mingling of the plasma from the different domain, otherwise not possible. So that's why magnetic reconnection has uh, two different ways. So if you see in the global sense, this is something that the magnetic energy went into this flow, so plasma energy, but there is important place happenings in this region where actually the magnetic field and plasma are not, um, not uh, moving together. And that's the place and that's the uh, uh, what we I will talk about or what the MMS is mission is for to understand this process inside this yellow circle, so to speak. But earlier uh, in generally it is in, in both sides it's important we have this large scale process and in the end what we see is this plasma heated and plasma different mixed and that's the original idea of this magnetic reconnection concept and that is the most easy observable in the uh, space and so in that sense this reconnection is everywhere and as I said, this large scale process is equally important to small and the large scale process exactly is what started to consider such kind of process. And actually it started from the solar flare um, where you could uh, see that somehow this new region between the sunspot somehow gets uh, very um, active and uh, bright. And this gives you the idea that uh, somehow the magnetic energy 
went towards the particle energy and uh, radiates, uh, as you see in the solar flares. So the connection happens is mainly observed as a large scale process in the historical sense, starting from the solar flare, CME, and eruption. And you have a lot of uh, nice um, signature which you can observe as this large scale concept of reconnection in the sun. And Earth's magnetosphere, as I showed you, this entire magnetosphere is driven with this process. And then, of course, if you see in the Earth, other planets, uh, you can Im easily imagine that you have also in the planetary magnetosphere or edge of the heliosphere. And even in the astrophysical sense, we'll see in the active galactic nuclear jets, you will expect some reconnection or X-ray flares in pulse of wind nebula. And of course, laboratory experiment and fusion is um, the reconnection plays also important role. And in the laboratory, it has been studied also in very detail of the reconnection. So you can see that many environment has this reconnection. And so uh, let's first go to the Earth and uh, let's go with the MMS and see what we can discuss with and learn from this uh, from this process. So. Earth, uh, as I said, is also driven by the magnetic, magnetic reconnection. And of course, uh, um, as in the sun, the most clear thing, what you see is namely the aurora. And so this large scale context, what, what consequence, what we see in the um, geospace is this aurora, which you can see in the night side. This is the day glow, so you can see the night side. And here you have this global MHD simulation. And this simulation, of course, now, um, now simulates this large scale plasma and magnetic process. And here you don't uh, go into this detail of the diffusion region physics, but we say, OK, the current is flowing along the um, electric field. So if you have this very strong electric field, you make some um, uh, dissipation and put it into the simulation code and then see the, how the magnetic field and plasma will go. And you can see quite good explain what we see in the um, magnetosphere. One is this magnet force reconnection if the solar wind comes um, and uh, accumulate the magnetic energy in the tail if the flux uh, is piled up in the tail. And then you have this magnet hole reconnection. So you can immediately see there are two important processes, and this process eventually creates the aurora, and these are called substorm or storm. And you can see that another important thing is that magnetic reconnection is very um, sporadic, and it's a, it's a large scale energy transfer process. And so this is the uh, view from the uh, aurora. Uh, how did we start to observe this uh, reconnection in space? And so uh, the earlier mission, this is from IC. Um, as I said, there is this uh, day side place where the magnetic field between the solar wind and the Earth's uh, magnetospheric side of the field will reconnect, where is this anti parallel region happens, of course, in the day side when the solar wind or IMF uh, interplanetary magnetic field is uh, looking southward. Um, there we'll, we will have this day side reconnection. And so if the spacecraft will cross, and actually the boundary is moving, not the spacecraft is moving, but relatively if it's crossed like this, you will see certain pattern in this is the magnetic field line. You can see this kind of uh, pattern. And also um, important is this flow. And you can see this kind of observation when you have this sub spacecraft crossing. And al also we, you see this normal component because they are reconnected. So the solar wind uh, IMF, and the Earth's magnetic field are reconnected. So um, this Earth, the first observation or the evidence is that magnetopause observation will have this rotational discontinuity condition, which is means that you have this normal component in this boundary uh, has been discovered by the earlier observation of this crossing. So this is the first evidence that we can say, OK, uh, IMF and uh, really magnetosphere can be reconnected. And in the magneto tail, um, uh, we have more, this is the boundary is more moving as you saw in the previous uh, simulation, it is more, um, more sporadic thing. So you have to have a lot of space car observations to see this large scale pattern of this flow. So this is from the spacecraft Geode, which did uh, survey for the first time uh, the large region in the magneto tail. 
and you can you could get the statistical distribution of the outflow, or you can uh, confirm that there is a near, near Earth magnetor reconnection, um, which is related to the subsum addition to this uh, more distant day reconnection. So this is what you can do with uh, uh, when you have this single spacecraft and, and try to get this large scale view. But then we learn from this um, single point measurement that in the end, we have to always know how the spacecraft is moving relative to the structure because in the magnetosphere, the structure is moving very fast. And you have to, you need to identify how large is the structure, how, move, how, how fast is the motion and where am I? And so the first um, spacecraft with four spacecraft mission called Cluster uh, was the one which we learned that we need this local temporal process um, uh, to study with four spacecraft. And uh, I wanted to show you these two easy books, which was for us a kind of uh, for space plasma physicists, it's kind of a very, very important textbook for I always recommend to my students. And because what it says is really um, how you can learn this local structure using this four spacecraft measurement. Um, how the structure is moving, how it is uh, oriented, how the gradient are. And so here you can see some of this nice uh, example. If you have this four spacecraft, you can see the difference. And if you can see the motion, uh, you can get more the uh, structure here. Actually, it, it is uh, reconstructed based on some uh, equation, uh, expectation from 2D, um, 2D MHD. Uh, equation. On the other hand, you can check where the spacecraft wire are and you can uh, really see the gradient based on this four spacecraft mission. And so you can immediately see, I mean, if we wanted to study the, the, this reconnection region, which I told you it was very small scale region, uh, we have to think about this four spacecraft to see how this um, region is structured. And so there has been several since then, this multipoint observation happened in terms of the uh, spacecraft in the magnetosphere missions. And in terms of reconnection, um, as I said, now this cluster is the four spacecraft mission. And you could see that, uh, oh, sorry. Um, you, you can see that uh, there is this um, structure related to the uh, reconnection region where you have this jet, as I said, and then flow is coming and you reconnect the magnetic field. And we know um, this region, uh, which has about the ion scale, as I said, this ion um, has to be in a particle scale, which is around a thousand kilometer and this uh, structure. Um, has the scale of the ion, for example, this gyration will be second. So this is something we have to uh, resolve if we want to see this uh, reconnection region in, in the Earth. Um, and that was fulfilled for the cluster. So cluster could do this flow physics, which is more the MHD, ideal MHD to ion plasma physics, but also this some um, uh, structure of the ion diffusion region. And in terms of the reconnection, as I said, this is also a large scale process. So the STEMIS, which has the five spacecraft, uh, tried to understand this entire process, what will happen in the substorm. So it does go to the large scale dynamics. So it's a bit different uh, direction. On the other hand, what we want to do with the MMS is, okay, we now know that what is happening, the ion, what is really doing with the electron. And of course, electron, uh, which is 1,800 lighter and faster than the, the ions, of course, you need to work much more uh, with a higher time resolution. So typical uh, electron scale, where you need this uh, 10 kilometer, how it is generates or how the inertia scale, or um, you have would uh, see this generation scale, which really has to go to the very small scale, um, even actually to the millisecond range. So um, that's how this MMS come. So MMS with the 2015, we'll have this ion electron plasma physics. And of course we would really see what we're doing with the electron when they are not trapped in the magnetic field. And so the kinetic process is something what we can do really towards the first time with the MMS. And so um, as, I, as you saw, we need this four spacecraft because we like to see the local structure. And it was launched in Cape Canaveral, which uh, it's for the only one launch I ever saw in my life. Um, 
but I wanted to show how this uh, instrumentation is. As you can imagine, we need really good uh, instrumentation because it has never been done that kind of uh, good um, high resolution observation. So uh, there are many instrumentation, um, but uh, I wanted to highlight that this is this uh, particle looking this uh, DES, this is electron and ion. We have same uh, kind of uh, instrumentation in four direction and basically this really allows the high time resolution measurement uh, of the particles and electron particularly. And the other uh, new thing for our, or a very uh, rare case is that you have this uh, 3D electric field and of course electric field is a major um, a quantity we need to see the energy dispersion uh, dissipation and so we have this electric field which is uh, rotate, uh, we have this spin plane double probe as well as a spin axis probe. So that allows us this 3D measurement. And then you have all this other magnetic field and all these um, other uh, ion composition and all these instruments as you see in the previous, uh, previous space missions. And the orbit, as um, as we I showed you, the important uh, reconnection region, which we know from the classical sense, is the magneto post, and the other is the magneto tail. And so the orbit was um, tuned so that you have uh, maximized the crossing of this region. So that uh, March 2015 was the launch. So it was launched around here um, in the uh, pre midnight, and it uh, the apogee rotate like this. And from the um, September, um, uh, Mar March, no, I'm sorry, it was March. And then it started the science phase from the September and all the winter season, um, you uh, crossed this magnetopause reconnection region. And then um, the, you, you did it the second time. And the second year, uh, the apogee was raised. And now the reconnection region uh, for the magneto tail was, uh, was uh, monitored with this new orbit. And um, this was already 2017. And since then, there's this extended mission. And uh, the apogee was further raised so that you can have more in the solar wind or the bow shock. Um, and uh, you have this uh, campaign for the tail in the D and uh, you start it with the um, dusk side flank and go to the day side and dawn side and so on. So um, it has the target region and also I have to say that this is equatorial orbit so it's really tuned for the reconnection um, in this orbit. And tetrahedron scale size uh, is 7 to 160 kilometer. Um, it will be more changing, but uh, this is the typical scale what uh, you have in this uh, orbit configuration. And so now I wanted to show several um, reconnection examples, um, starting from the day side, uh, which was, as I said, uh, which was uh, happened in the uh, from the September and immediately in October, there was the famous uh, magnetopause reconnection happening, which many people know. But I tell you what what's this important is of this reconnection event. Namely, uh, first of all, I like to say that um, uh, what, as I said, the first is the magnetopause reconnection. And uh, here you will see in this uh, picture or the, this, this um, live way of uh, magnetic field and electron ion velocities are from the uh, real data uh, between this one uh, one or 45 seconds data, uh, one, uh, one and 45 seconds data, one minute, and this pink are the magnetic field and uh, yellow is the electron uh, bulk velocity and uh, uh, blue is the ion bulk velocity. And what you can see here is this MMS crossed in this region, reconnection region from the um, solar wind side, which is the, you have the southward magnetic field. So, so I can show you again. So this is the southward magnetic field and eventually come it slightly away and then uh, dive into the magnetosphere proper where you have, as you can see the uh, magnetic field in the northward. So you can have this here, the anti-parallel magnetic field and then uh, you come back again to the uh, magneto uh, sheath side, so the solar wind side. And here you can see that it's crosses, magnetic field changes, and eventually you can see a lot of um, very disturbed electron flow. So this is where we are seeing this diffusion region. So to, I'll show you later more the detail. 
in back, uh, you can see that hardly uh, blue is not so much doing. So you can see really it's it's something what electron is doing actively, and then come back again into the magneto sheath. So this is how the um, field will happening when you are coming live into the uh, magneto pose reconnection region. And however. Uh, we would like to know actually from that we still don't know what we do therefore is we compare with this observation with the uh, uh, simulation and this is also new uh, really from the um, from the mms era that we really can compare with the simulation because we know that electron and we are now talking similar scale size uh, what you have in the simulation uh, simulation people on the other hand, of course, we are very local. You can see, therefore, we have to see actually first where we are located. And so this is the magnetopause reconnection. And here again is a magnetic field site. Um, the characteristic of this reconnection region is, is this asymmetry. So magneto sheath site, you have much more dense, but the field is low. Magnetic field site, you have much more um, high dense magnetic field, but the density is low and temperature is high. And so you have very asymmetry situation. And um, what you can see, therefore, is that first you see, you identify your, your region based on this data from the magnetic field, where you can get the uh, current crossing, so this topology, and how the current was flowing, uh, which you can calculate also. This is also new from the MMC. It's always, uh, you can always calculate with the particle this current and this current intensified here, and you can see how this temperature is changing. So these uh, bulk um, properties uh, allows us to compare where the uh, spacecraft was crossing. And once we know the crossing, we can now talk about how this distribution or the, how the electron was really looked like in terms of the um, velocity distribution function. So as you saw, the, uh, if, if you are not familiar with this kind of measurement, so plasma measurements will be done in the four pi direction. And uh, you can see for the, for the direction uh, where this uh, electron are coming, you can see the property of this plasma and also for the different energy range. And um, in a usual sense, um, you, you will, if you have this magnetic field, you call it parallel and uh, particularly you will see several of this distribution called the crescent. And you can see the parallel crescent, we, if you see that kind of acceleration along the magnetic field and you get heated, you can see like this kind of uh, distribution. And uh, more, uh, more surprising distribution is this perpendicular crescent, namely here, this is the evidence for example, if you have the magnetic field and you have only this kind of distribution, what you can see actually here is that this um, electron, you don't see more this isotropic electron or the uh, gyrating electron, but you can see only one side, this kind of particle. So uh, what happens from this comparison? Uh, we could see, therefore, how this electron is changing in a very detailed sense by comparing with the simulation how this electron is changing and what does it do to get this reconnection uh, working. And so, as I said, the most uh, uh, surprising thing is this um, perpendicular crescent, as I said. Um, here I showed you again this uh, magnetic field from the magnetospheric side, uh, magnetic field from the magneto sheath side. And uh, here the four spacecraft again gives you where you are and how this, uh, how this uh, structure is form and how what is working and as i said this uh, surprising uh, distribution which you see this perpendicular crescent um, is happening from this uh, this way so this explains a bit from the theoretical side so this is the same feed line here the magneto sheath magnetosphere however oh sorry this thing is looking from from bottom so if you bottom up uh, you can see this um, this magnetosphere side where you have this very, uh, very thin current sheet, which is the current density actually, what you're showing. And you have this, um, uh, uh, this is the unbipolar electric field, which is happens when you have this thin current sheet and you have ion electron different motion, you have this ion scale unbipolar um, electric field. And when the electron, which is much more at the right-hand side in the magneto sheet side, uh, moves towards this magnetosphere, it gets accelerated. And then um, this gives you um, the entering to, towards the magnetosphere. And then um, here it starts to gyrate. On the other hand, uh, it's not gyrate, but you have namely the electric field, 
which is created by the pressure gradient of the electron itself, which I uh, have unfortunately not time to explain more. On the other hand, um, this uh, place, you can see that there's electric field and electron is moving in the, on the other hand, um, in the end, um, anti parallel to the electric field, what means the current current is flowing along the electric field. So this gives you the dusk, um, the electron uh, magnetic energy dissipation as like in the uh, electric field and current is the same as you can see in the battery situation. If you have this, um, the usual uh, current flowing the electric field, you get the heat. And so this is where the energy uh, of the magnetic energy is dissipated. And this motion, what you can see along this electric field is what you can see here as a perpendicular um, uh, motion of these electrons. So you, you can really see that how the electrons are accelerated along the electric field, which is um, in the perpendicular is for the first time whatever seen in this uh, space plasma. And it can be done only with the MMS. And you can see also, of course, uh, if, as I said, uh, the electrons are accelerated uh, in the electric field. And here you have uh, very high, uh, high uh, magnetic field uh, along this, this line. And so the electron is flowing more in the parallel, this parallel crescent you can see. And also um, on the other side, you can see the opposite, which uh, confirms that this is the X line situation. And so the important therefore is that all these details we could confirm which uh, was known a bit from the theory side, but it's for the observational side, it's the first time we, we could really compare, uh, compare and, and confirm that magnetic energy is dissipated um, in this reconnection. And okay, so this was fine, but then we learned that there's a lot of uh, crossing was going on and uh, there are many, many, um, uh, many tens of uh, reconnection happening and some surprising thing has happened, namely uh, what, what was seen is the uh, picture I showed you now was kind of a steady state, the more uh, quiet situation. But what we uh, seen, what was seen in this uh, real data was you have much more this oscillatory situation. So it was more oscillatory energy conversion which was happening. And um, here I show you the electric field and uh, I show you again this X line. Um, uh, what you can see here also in the asymmetry is that this X line, which is really the, uh, the topology change place and the uh, location where the flow um, is uh, stagnant or stag uh, is different. So you have here this high, energy, high uh, speed along this feed line and uh, there you have this difference. Oops, sorry, oops. Uh, Okay, I'm sorry, it doesn't go back. Okay, I don't know why I'm not going back. Okay, sorry. Um, here you can see um, that uh, that you, you really see this oscillatory uh, energy conversion, which actually uh, stimulated new simulation and uh, direct comparison really got this 2D peak simulation similar uh, scale. Um, on the other hand, uh, uh, we got uh, from the plasma, you have 7.5 millisecond data. So this is uh, the best uh, um, data, which you can see some of this oscillatory. So you have negative and positive, and this is uh, much more larger than what you expect in the global sense of reconnection rate. But uh, post, this is the more local, what we have seen in this diffusion region. Okay, and um, the other interesting thing, particle thing is that uh, if we have, this X line and uh, stagnation point more close together, which happens when there is a, a component of the magnetic field along the current direction. Uh, there was a very fast, um, fast normalization of this parallel jet. Because if you have um, the normal situation, if you don't have the component parallel to the uh, current, you will have more the perpendicular jet. But if you have the parallel component in the, along the reconnection electric field, you have also these parallel jets. And what we can see here is that parallel jet, uh, which was uh, accelerated to the electric field parallel to the electric field and got uh, thermalized from the magneto C side, got uh, the jet and then thermalized uh, with the wave particle interaction. And uh, this was identified from this most highest uh, birth mass 65 kilohertz data. And uh, sorry, this got uh, again back, sorry. Um, okay. 
Oh, sorry. So what we could see that it's really um, the turbulent electric field that spreads matter in wave particle interaction. We can confirm from the theory, although including this in the simulation is still the challenging thing. So I think this is would be the most the, the next step, which we could compare in the, um, with the simulation. And so um, this is the day side, and I wanted to go to the um, night side. So night side, uh, as I said, this is the more in the parallel uh, situation in here. Uh, you have the um, reconnected field line from the day side come toward the tail. And in this situation, you can see uh, north and south are the sy symmetric situation. So we call it therefore symmetric reconnection. And also you can see that basically the magnetic field should be like this and like this. So it's really anti-parallel. So this is kind of the classical textbook case with 2D and you don't have any complication. And uh, here, this uh, figure also wanted to demonstrate this new technique, which has been done with the MMS for the first time, is that you use the magnetic field from the four spacecraft and also use the plasma current from the four spacecraft to get this uh, polynomial fit of the magnetic field, which may give you a 3D uh, reconstruction. So as I said before, we usually use this uh, simulation comparison, but for this particular case, uh, with this construction, you can really do with the data only the 3D view of the reconnection. And I run again this uh, video, so uh, you can see how this the normal component uh, changes from this neg pos negative side to the positive side. And you can see how this uh, field changes from this place to this place. So you can see now the more northern side, and you can see the flow is changing for, from the uh, from the earthward side. So um, with this reconstruction, we could uh, get this uh, very simple 2D reconnection, quite uh, many exercises, which we know from the laminar reconnection theories. And first of all, uh, we could get very well this reconnection rate calculated. Um, and also uh, this normalized reconnection rate, which you expect from the theory, but also um, the simulation can be done very, um, very simply. And you could compare and uh, you could see very well the comparison. And also one can also use this database uh, technique. Oh, sorry. And you can see this, um, uh, this uh, distribution, which you expect from the non gyratory pressure of the meandering electron, and we can you really use the theory to um, confirm. And also, what you can also do is because of this uh, gradient scale, we can get really the scale size of this electron diffusion region, uh, which was, was uh, 1 dE. And uh, you can really talk about the kilometers, like uh, 20 to 30 kilometer uh, uh, half widths in the z direction and 150 kilometer half fits in the X direction. And so um, you can really see this uh, quantifying uh, was possible uh, because of this laminar reconnection. And uh, um, this was consistent with the theory uh, predicted from the theory that actually what we are seeing in the reconnection is that around this electron bounce time scale, which is a non-trapped electron get again back to trapped electron. So this is the scale size of this EDR or in the inner EDR, which is for the first time uh, confirmed from because we have this very, very simple 2D reconnection. Uh, the interesting was that you have more multiple crescent, which we could not so much see in the day side. And so we had this simple uh, simplified case, but I should tell you that this was the only simplified case, but we found in the tail. Um, the, the other ones were more 3D, or for example, this is another type of reconnection, also in the magneto tail, which you expect more simplified situation. But for this particular case, um, it was very turbulent. And uh, the difference between the one I showed you before is that this um, energization of uh, particle was significant. So you can see at the right here, you can see uh, very accelerated electrons during this very turbulent magnetic field, electric field, while you have this bulk flow reversal as you get in the reconnection, but the density was also very low. So you have a, a very different situation. You can immediately see magnetic energy is really, really dominant for this reconnection. 
And so um, there has been more detailed study. You can also see this JE for different scales or different electric field uh, size. And you can see that perpendicular energy was uh, more important in the around the ion gyro scale and so on. And more parallel in the, in the higher frequency, the lower habit scale. And the uh, interesting part is that in this, during this magnetic field, uh, there was a lot of uh, magnetic depletion and it was shown that this makes this particle acceleration um, also uh, very active. And so what I showed were well, these two things was rather uh, the classical or what is predicted, what we said, okay, we will measure the magnetic field reconnection in the day side and the night side. But uh, there are other groups of uh, reconnection which was very um, uh, interesting sense in a sense that now the current sheet is not guaranteed. Um, the one is this Kelvin Kelvin Helmholtz wave induced reconnection, which is actually um, discovered uh, from the data side uh, in the cluster era because uh, this is the uh, magnetosphere at this flank region. You have this flow here going and uh, to particularly during the northward a case where you don't have so much this reconnection, what you saw before, uh, you see this very uh, clear, this vortex and this roll up vortex and some uh, related uh, reconnection will happen at behind when it is the more pushed. Um, this reconnection was first uh, shown in the Hasegawa on uh, this cluster case, but then um, we, for the MMS, of course, uh, we could see much more the details, namely the ion jets was confirmed and also this electron diffusion region was observed. And this gives us some um, nice comparison with the simulation also where with a large scale peak where you can also follow the ion dynamics because here this, this vortex it phase is a very large, uh, large thing. So you have to make this large scale 3D uh, simulation, uh, giving up uh, how it will change. And uh, as you can see also in the cartoon, uh, the, initially it was this like vortex, but eventually it mingled up with a very, very complicated turbulent feature. And so uh, what is important in terms of magnetospheric physics is this is the method how the mass is really transferred towards the magnetosphere because particularly in the northward case, we don't have the reconnection, which is really an active way of transferring the solar wind plasma inside. Um, this mechanism, which is uh, done in the Helmholtz, you can do it also in the north, northward case. And so implication to the large scale mass transfer rate can be done based on this detailed comparison of MMS towards this large scale dynamics, which eventually is also important in understanding the um, uh, space plasma. Okay, this is the one side of the uh, current sheet. And then uh, we have another type of new current sheet, which is again, very turbulent. Um, this is in the magneto sheets. So um, as you see in this cartoon, of course, in the bow shock, you have this heated plasma and this is a very turbulent area. It is known from, uh, from a long time before, but uh, from this cluster era again, because we have chance to see the local structure um, there was uh, evidence found of the reconnection jet also in this very turbulent uh, media where you have some temporal current sheet uh, built in, in this kind of uh, uh, media. But the discovery happened with the MMS uh, that uh, what we have happened is that in this very, very uh, quick uh, situation, which is like you can see that point one second crossing, you have this uh, electron inertia scale uh, current sheet and you have seen this electron jet supervening electron jet and you can see from this is the current sheet how this um, magnetic field changes and you can see how this opposite opposite jet from this two pair of MMS see this opposite opposite jet simultaneously really confirming this electron jet happenings in this reconnection and also this is an interesting thing is while during this time ion was nothing happening. So you see only electron. So what is going on? And of course, in this real layer, it's really, uh, this was a magneto sheath, but it was the case uh, also when the um, shock was pa quasi parallel, which is uh, known that it is very turbulent. And um, once we know more in the shock, uh, there has been more studies on this turbulent media, how really this reconnection is happening. 
And uh, here again, the simulation helps us a lot. And this is the simulation, uh, you can see it, um, that this ion, um, here you can see how this shock simulation is going on. And you can see a lot of X and this in C in, in the upstream side, you can see in, uh, you can see how this shock in this parallel, uh, quasi parallel shock reform. And if you see this time scale, it's really, really small. It's around three or uh, six ion gyro time scale. You get already the very different thing. And so, so you can imagine that ion has no time to follow this reconnection in this case. And so you, you really see some of them as electron only and also some of them as ion, but this is much more disturbed area. And this is something really new, uh, we uh, newly observed thing and very active area of research now, uh, you can imagine. And for example, here you can see uh, the ratio of the probability of this kind of uh, reconnection, this shock transition era, uh, region. And you can see that uh, you have uh, always, uh, all the time, some of this reconnection, but mostly uh, in the quasi parallel and more in the high Mach number shock. And of course, if you talk about high Mach number shock, um, so this will be done in uh, other area. And namely, for example, you can do the supernova remnant uh, where you have also this quasi parallel shock. And there it's, it's uh, known that it's a high Mach number shock or you have this Saturn ball shock. So um, this research from this Earth-based uh, area where you can see this shock reformation and shock structure based on this detail of the MMS era, uh, eventually we can um, extrapolate to understand this more uh, universal process. And we hope that service with a simulation can help us to uh, fill this gap. And so I come to my summary. Um, I hope that I could convince you that MMS uh, for the first time and able to resolve this very fast process, this inside this electron diffusion region. And we could confirm some theories, but we could see a lot of uh, discovery for these new features in reconnection current sheet at different boundaries in geospace. It's not only in the day side, it's not also in the, in the day side, but also in the very uh, different uh, types of current sheets. And of course, I miss here a lot of this. Um, another important thing is that you have more um, ion composition, which is a heavy ion, which uh, we know also plays a role. Uh, there are other things, but here at least I could get some touch of this electron diffusion, uh, what uh, we could see from the MMS. And the other thing uh, I showed you is that uh, we have many this event adapted peak simulation and this could uh, for the first time make us to compare quantitatively these reconnection parameters, um, the waves and uh, jets and also the reconnection rate and so on, and uh, see how and where this uh, energization is happening within this diffusion region and so on. And so I hope this is an important step uh, now to extend this MMS knowledge toward uh, more other environments, because uh, we hope this big simulation can make this um, mishelping this um, explorate our results. And so, um, as I said, MMS just scratched the surface. I know it's which data set. Um, I talked about today only this reconnection, but um, we hope that it is expected to unveil also important aspects for other universal process, such as shocks and turbulence and uh, in the upcoming years. And so this is my end of the talk. And I hope um, I could show you a bit this exploration of the plasma and thank you very much for uh, being in my talk. That's excellent. Thank you very much, Rumi, for this uh, great overview of reconnection, starting with uh, cluster and other missions and showing us what the MMS mission added to that. And I think we have come as close as as, as humanly possible to watching reconnection happen with your with your presentation we have again a very sizable attendance with this talk and i'm sure there will be a number of questions so there are two possibilities uh, for dropping your questions 
uh, you could either raise your hand and then Saliba will unmute uh, your microphone and you can talk, or you can drop your question in the chat and I will then read it to Rumi and uh, Rumi can respond to it. Right now, I don't see, a, there will be a first question in the chat, but I see a raised hand at the top of the participants. That's by Roger Bonnet. Roger, please unmute your microphone and, and ask a question to Rumi. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Rumi. Uh, that was a fascinating talk. Uh, I always found your science uh, very ungrateful, but you made it uh, fascinating <laughs> and I really appreciate it. I have a few questions concerning uh, cluster and MMS. Um, concerning uh, cluster, you did not say anything about the double star mission. Is there anything which uh, has been added by the double star mission to with respect to the, the four mission cluster? Yes, um, th this is... Um... Yes, uh, in, in a sense, since I kind of uh, went to this micro scale process, I couldn't uh, so much talk about double spa, but um, there's several things what we, we, we could do very well with the cluster. Namely, we have this, uh, how this reconnection jet evolved. And that helped a lot uh, with the double star combining with the cluster measurement. What, what, what would be your dream for a future mission? Hey, I, I would like to have a cluster and a MMS together, or this, this all this. I, I showed you what we are missing is always, uh, we are now concentrating in the micro scale, but then we would like to know where we are. And then we would like to therefore know around the cluster scale size, uh, um, uh, the mission, which tells us what the ion scales are. And then of course, we know the, like to know the consequence. So, so what we would like to know is that, um, we would like to have is that this kind of observation happening in this uh, mighty scale. Thank you again, uh, that, that was fascinating talk. And thank you for your enthusiasm and the quality of your talk, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Uh, I will read a question from Sergei Apatenkov. Uh, he is asking regarding reconnection in the magnetosheath, does the magnetic energy transform to the thermal and kinetic energy there? Is there extra magnetic energy to do this? Oh, okay, so uh, oh. you're talking because of the time scales, of course, is, is very short and it doesn't go, go into the ion scale. That means it was steer. Um, I, it will not have this large scale consequence, you're right, in a sense, if I understand correctly this observation, um, it, it will, it will, it will make still the jet. So in a sense that it will come from the magnetic energy towards this jet. This is the only, only um, thing which you can do it. But doesn't go in towards this large scale. Of course, it can be that this uh, you might have more observation of this um, this uh, coalescence and so on, or even island. But I think this is still a very uh, new observation, and they are actively studying um, these kind of observation. And if I understand correctly, the um, if you want to do it in a um, in a burst mode, uh, it is more. Uh, we we can hope that we can get more collected data in the in the next few uh, few years. Okay, uh, let me go on with a question from John Sarnetsky. He says he thinks it's a dumb question, but I don't think so because uh, I would like to endorse it. Is it true to say that without reconnection we would not see any aurora on Earth? Yes. I think, yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> Where is the reconnection happening that produces the aurora? Uh, this, in a sense that, of course, aurora, the thing is that the driver is the sun, and that's why I'm saying. And, but not, it, it is like directly, I, I saw, showed you the field, and it, not, it is not that this direct um, electron produced at this reconnection will, uh, will be at this, uh, coming to the ionosphere, but you need this more, more one step further. That was the entire discussion what we had with this mission like Themis. Um, reconnection produce uh, 
this flows um, and that eventually give it to the uh, tap the energy more in the inner magnetosphere. The aurora itself, this this uh, uh, this energy comes the, from the from the comparison. It's much more um, in the region where this uh, flow is more coming toward the inner magnetosphere, and there where you have this uh, energy coming due to the inductive electric field. Uh, interacting with the dipole field. So it's a bit, uh, um, it's not the directly this aurora powered from the, along the field. Sorry about my phone ringing. I didn't mean to distract. Um, okay, the next question is by Hugh Hudson. Uh, he starts with saying, thanks, MMS is wonderful. I think we all agree on that, and especially after your talk. He goes on, but you have not mentioned particle acceleration, which is by far the dominant process in the solar case, at least. Does this fit in well with your ideas about reconnection physics? Yes, um, I try to show one of this, um, this very, um, very um, turbulent reconnection case, which I showed in the, uh, the um, tail. So the, the thing is that uh, we, we think this really, if we really want to compare with the sun, um, we really need more this large scale uh, understanding of uh, this uh, particle acceleration. Because as you might have also in the sun, uh, the real real acceleration happens also um, when this reconnection um, and how this go to at the large scale and then I think we can really compare with the sun because of as you for the for the solar physics um, or the really flare physics or something but I've talked was only this small scale and the one you observe is the sun we are talking much more this large scale and so but now I think it's a good start now we have no this at least small engine we can do good understanding with the modeling. And I hope we can go more toward the large scale based on this knowledge eventually. Um, okay, sorry, I was I was uh, kicked out for a moment, uh, but I think, uh, sorry, I missed most of your answer, but I think uh, it was just me. So uh, everybody else was, was uh, connect, remained connected. Um, next question is by Divyan Usur. How can MMS detect the fluctuations in interplanetary magnetic field and electric field components during magnetic reconnection time? Uh, are you saying... Um, how a, can MMS how can detect the fluctuations? Fluctuations in intermagnetic... Why, 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 um, why this... Are you talking about large scale or... Because, because some of the pro process we have... Uh, um, we have no way this interplanetary magnetic... Field. Uh, are you saying whether we are? Oh, of course, if you are in a, if you talk about magnetopause reconnection, we usually use uh, the one side is in the magnetosis, which is roughly uh, what you expect in the what in the solar wind. Of course, there are studies which you always compare with the um, real IMF with the wind mm -hmm. and so on. But uh, yeah, with other missions. Yeah. Which on, on the other hand, what, what I wanted to say is that, as, as you see, in the, in the next few years, the uh, solar wind campaign is, is more a uh, important uh, uh, focus, and, and we will have much more interplanetary or studies or solar wind studies in terms of turbulence, and uh, possibly maybe we can detect also some um, reconnection. Uh, mm -hmm. Perhaps related and very brief question, what is uh, by Petrenko Bodan, what is the typical occurrence of reconnection events or occurrence rate probably of reconnection events at the day side and in the magneto tail? Okay, so um, I, I don't know what you mean occurrence rate is that, uh, but, but I, if I remember correctly, I understand magneto post crossing 6% or so, what do you see in the reconnection, but somebody can ask okay. me more. Um, okay. And a tail, uh, as you as you saw, it it much 
depends on what you are uh, saying, um, reconnect. The, the thing is that reconnection, uh, substorm happens every two hours or something. And you, the thing is that reconnection is a large scale process. So reconnection, detecting reconnection is not so difficult or saying that some, some consequence. Uh, what is really difficult is to come into this diffusion region. And that's, um, that's crossing, which I showed is one of the three, four was really in the diffusion region going Tewat and Earthward. And, and, and so um, in the day side, it's really easy uh, because you know it, it, is, it is a current sheet fixed and we know roughly that, that it's more forced from the solar wind. We know the exact magneto poses. Uh, it's much more um, easier in the tail. It's much more difficult if you go to the diffusion region um, mm -hmm. crossing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we uh, are, it's six o'clock. Uh, are you okay for a few more questions, Rumi? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's go ahead with a question by Federico Fraschetti. Thanks for a very interesting talk. Were interplanetary shocks seen by the MMS? If so, was it possible to measure the corrugation of the shock surface? Similar work was done with cluster data recently. Um. Okay, I, I'm not following, unfortunately, this study. Yeah, um, so I'm not, yeah, I, sorry, I cannot tell you. I'm sure there are some study, but uh, yeah, I saw, yes, you asked, yeah, I recently saw the study, but I don't know uh, the conclusion of the studies. Yes, so there are, there are studies there, okay. um, observation, but I'm sorry, I cannot tell. My, With MMS. Yeah, yeah, okay. there are, yes. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, Klaus Schilling has a question and he says, cluster and MMS are 3D configurations. How sensitive is position and attitude knowledge of the spacecrafts for measurement quality? Um, of course, uh, that, that gives you the, the wrong answer. If we had, I mean, if we don't know sufficiently the distance or the location of the spacecraft, we will get the gradient law wrong. That means we will estimate that uh, if we say sync current sheet uh, and then electron scale or ion scale, I mean, of course, electron and ion scale, at least we will not uh, miss it because it's so different, but bigger or smaller. And so that, that can happen, of course, if you, if you uh, don't uh, have the correct um, position. Mm -hmm. A uh, question by Raya Guru. When they say there's a geo-effective CME, what exactly happens in terms of reconnection at the day side and at the magneto tail? Okay. Uh, the, this, this, uh, if you have geo-effective means that, of course, first of all, CME has this extreme compression. What will happen is that you see a very, very uh, compressed magnetosphere. And it comes also with a, um, so you can see that reconnection happens predominantly when it is a southward IMF. If it's, um, if you, the compression happens during the northward IMF, uh, reconnection doesn't happen and just it gets compressed. If in the southward IMF, a, a normal uh, reconnection will happen and you have this flux transfer toward the tail, what will happen is that the, um, Aurora latitude will be, in the end, what will happen is that you have a lot of uh, flux pile up in the magneto tail, you have a lot of electric field convection, um, and what will happen eventually is this aurora, bright aurora, uh, large, uh, in the local time, and, and there has been also some of this aurora which have already um, quite, um, this night side aurora is not anymore night side, it's more dusk side, dawn side, and all this aurora oval gets very, um, very large. Um, in, the, in the lower latitude, and you, you could see also in Graz aurora, but for example, <laughs> and uh, yes, so it, it will have, uh, and of course, yeah, geo-effectiveness is, of course, you will have this GIC if you have the aurora current happening, or you have this energetic electrons or injections, and you might have this satellite, uh, but this will hopefully not happen to the MMS that it will get attacked by satellite, but uh, yes. Um, Next is, uh, it's more a comment from Elon Roth. Uh, I think it's directed at Hugh's question. The reconnection is considered also a 
reconnection is considered also as a heating process of the solar corona, making the corona at mega Kelvin versus 6,000 of the Kelvin of the photosphere. Uh, I think that's more a comment and relates to Hughes' mm -hmm. acceleration. Let's continue with Stein Haaland. He thanks you for the nice talk, as we all do. We can now, he continues, we can now observe electron scales, but as far as I understand, we still do not understand all the physics, in particular, how reconnection is initiated. Do we need better, faster measurements or new theories, simulations? What is... So, yes, we, we like to be well, in the right place right. to initiate the, reconnect, to, to the reconnection observation. And that means, mm. I think we need more points to, more to be points. able to monitor that, I would say. Um, but but one, one hope is that now, now we have a lot of statistics, which, I mean, we cannot see this initiation exactly, but what we can see is, we see, with the MMS, I think we know a lot of different current configuration or the magnetosis is also very unstable reconnection. And, and so we, we see a lot of settings and so hope we can um, see more this condition when we have this reconnection, uh, mm -hmm. more collection. But of course, if we would like to see, mm -hmm. uh, and um, what I think it's still missing is, as I said, we, this wave particle interaction just started uh, to see more the details. And, and that's also something which we need more detailed simulation or the more high resolution simulation. So we, we talk about if we want to understand the global, we want to have the more large scale uh, peak. But maybe the other side is that maybe we would like to know also um, a smaller resolution to resolve this wave particle interaction also mm -hmm. to see. Um, next question is from Dominic Payne. How is the global reconnection rate influenced by electron scale dynamics in the electron re diffusion region? Okay, as I said, um, this, this reconnection rate somehow, uh, okay, the first part, I showed you this oscillatory thing. This gives you a norm reconnection rate if we include it. On the other hand, we I think global reconnection, maybe it's more the average. And what we are seeing this very large scale uh, uh, thing is uh, rate is more than this due to this wave particle interaction locally. Um, the one what I showed in the, the tail, it is exactly what you expect from the reconnection and from the global sense. So, but surprisingly, um, what, what happened is that this event I showed is ideally it was like six seconds and it was the same as what you expect in the global reconnection rate, but this ended in six seconds because afterwards we see much more 3D structure. So it is not, uh, we, we cannot, um, somehow it ended up with a global reconnection rate, which we have also in this small thing, but it is not like that it expanded, expanded, it got in the reconnection, but we have more island and other structure and on the average, we get somehow the large scale reconnection rate. So this seems to be the case. Okay. Um, we have three more questions, if you agree, and sure. then I would close the discussion. The next one is by Ludwig Klein. Do the observations provide new insight into ion acceleration during magnetic reconnection? Yes, actually, um, I concentrated today, sorry, of the electron, because this is something which you want to say, okay, MMS, we can do it. Um, of course, ion did, did it too. And you can imagine an ion get also uh, demagnetized and you have this ion acceleration. And, but you can also imagine ion acceleration is more larger scale. So um, if we, it's good if we can do it, um, the MMS, but this needs to be, uh, to be, uh, f to be supplemented with other spacecraft and so on. I mean, we, we can see that we can definitely, we, we in fact, there are studies of ion uh, scale, um, ion, uh, demagnetized ion and acceleration. Mm. Uh, but uh, yes, there, there's also uh, still uh, still uh, work or going on. But today, sorry, I just talk about electrons. Fair enough. Uh, next question again by Dibiendo Sur on 
can MMS, can MMS detect the geomagnetic storm, whether it is CME induced or high speed solar wind driven CIR induced? Does that make a difference? I don't know for, for can MMS detect a storm? Yes, we, we can detect, of course, we, if this detect a storm, yes, but it is not what we will predict or it, it's not uh, something what we, uh, we will observe, of course, yes. Whatever storm, uh, you will have more difference in the solar wind drivers. And if there's a difference in the solar driver, we will see the effect in the magnetosphere. So somehow, and, and also, but, but I can sh say you something is that, for example, I show, I don't know whether you remember, in a, I have this quiet connection and a very active connection. This has very different solar wind driver. So, um, magnetosphere content will change and this will change the, the signature of the reconnection. So yeah, th those things is also something um, large scale, but interesting okay. in the future. Finally, the last question by uh, Francisco Murillo. Uh, what methods are used to reconstruct the dynamic magnetic field lines with four detectors? In particular, is a particular machine learning method being used to infer the magnetic field structure. I remember the uh, polynomial fits you, yes. you mentioned. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Is that a machine learning method or is that? No, 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 no. This is purely non, non, yeah. This is that uh, the cluster we use the magnetic field, we assign this is a linear gradient, now it's a polynomial fit. So it, it is pure data based uh, fit assumption. I, I thought that was really impressive with four yes. points in the polynomial. Yes, I, I really found it impressive. And so, yes, that's really what I wanted to show. Excellent. I think we're done with the questions. So what remains to be done is to thank you once again, Rumi, for this fascinating and very insightful talk on reconnection and uh, in general and MMS in particular, MMS electron in particular. Let me close by uh, saying that this uh, online seminar is going to continue. We are right now in plasma physics at the sun, at the earth, and in the heliosphere. Next week, we'll have a talk on uh, Ulysses about the heliosphere. And then we will switch gears again from uh, planets in the beginning to plasma physics now uh, to into astronomy and astrophysics. Uh, the seminar will continue in on the 9th, 5th of November with a number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven talks on astronomy and astrophysics and cosmology. And uh, you will find all that on the EC webpage, which is uh, constantly maintained. And uh, please refer to there and hope to see you again one week from now. Thanks again, Rumi, for Thank this. Thank you very much. And thanks, everybody. We had a sizable attendance of close to 200 at the peak. And uh, that was a great achievement. Thanks, Rumi. Thank and you very thanks, much. Everybody. And all have a nice uh, morning, evening, night, uh, whatever your time zone is. Bye bye. Uh, bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Rumi. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Saliba. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. Bye bye.